Hey go fans, welcome back to the channel. It's a nice gloomy day here in North Dakota, so I figured I'd come out to the studio and get a video done. This week we're talking about effective storing, sorting, and locating LEGO within your collection. I'm Jeremy, and you're watching Sherwood Forest Bricks. So why are we making the video? Well, this just so happens that this is the number one topic that I get asked all the time is how I store, how I sort, and how I locate all my Lego in such a vast collection. In fact, I even had a friend comment on one of my last videos about the subject, and we offline went into a longer conversation, but I figured some of the advice that I provided him, I can provide everybody, make a video out of it. So whether you're nine, or 90, have four sets or 400 sets, eventually you're gonna have to effectively store your Lego so that you can find it better. And if we can find it better, we can build faster. And frankly, there's a lot to go with, right? There's 80,000 different parts in the Lego's collection, 229 different colors and over 19,000 sets. So no matter how you decide to store your Lego, it's gonna be a daunting task, nevertheless. So with the hustle and bustle of today's society, we don't have all the time in the world to build Lego. I wish I did. I wish I even have all Sunday. And busy schedule that I have for my entire life, all Sunday is build Lego. And I still don't do enough of it. But if you can find that 30 to 60 minutes, you don't want to spend all of it looking for parts. The average set is 100 plus pieces. It takes the average person 10 to, 10 to 20 seconds per piece in the set. Now that's already in a bag as defined by Lego in a sequence to build the Lego set and get it out onto wherever you're gonna display it. That is still quite a bit of time. To be, they're talking like 30 minutes for an average set. Something that's in the range of 150 pieces probably takes the average builder about half an hour to open the, bit, the box, get the Lego out, build it, and be done. 30 minutes. So you have only given, given yourself 30 to 60 minutes a week to build Lego, that's only one set. Now, if you have pieces in your collection that you're building, you don't want to spend another 30 to 60 minutes looking for the parts you need to build, you know, the BNSF locomotive. So that's why we're trying to effectively store our Lego, sort our Lego, and locate our Lego, is so that we can become better builders and save time so that we can spend with our family or exercise, I don't know, whatever you do. But in the end, it's my theory that if we can reduce the amount of time it takes to build Lego, we can increase the amount of time that we actually spend enjoying the Lego, and that increases our happiness. So by effectively storing, sorting, and locating our Lego, we can increase our happiness with the Lego and make our week better. But where do you start? How do you figure out what you want to do? Well. A lot of times people ask, do you store by color? Do you store by part? Do you store by category? What I think is more important is to figure out what you're gonna store into. So you could store it in a bin. You could store it in a Vidmar. You could even store it in a Sterilite drawers. There's Tackle Box. And then there's regular totes. And by that I mean little containers with lids. Well, when push comes to shove, what I prefer to use is the Acro Mills small part organizer. And we just got a new one in today. So let's talk about it. So here we go. This is the Acro Mills part bin that I use as in addition to the other one. So this one is a mix of the large bins and the small bins. It has 32 small bins and 12 large bins. The other one has 64 small bins. And I think they make one that has all large bins, but I can't remember. Yeah, they do. So they have one that has 24 large bins. So if this is what we're gonna decide to use, we have to figure out how our collection is gonna go into it, right? Now, these larger bins have quite a number of cubic inches of space. And the small ones obviously have less. I think this total is uh, 18 cubic inches, and this is somewhere around 50. Uh, they're not labeled. But how do we determine how we're gonna store a collection into this? We can't just start randomly putting parts in here, right? 
or can we? So here's Shuri Forest Bricks. We have a secret weapon in our sorting endeavor, and that is the Uline reclosable plastic bags. And we use them in a variety of sizes, but we, we basically use four. And you can use Ziploc, uh, gallon bags, etc. We have used those as well, but most collections don't have the necessary parts to put them in a Ziploc bag of that size, I just find, but <clears throat> I've used them. I have a whole bunch in there. But we start with the small ones. We have the two by threes, we have the three by fours, we have the four by sixes, and we have the six by sixes. And that's the secret weapon that we use because we know the volume of space inside the bag when it's closed is a given amount. So if we can sort our entire collection into zip bags, and you don't do the whole thing at once, just the categories that you're sorting at the moment. So if you want to do all your brick or all your plate, you can sort all those into the bags, know what the space requirements are, we're going to come back to that in a second, and then you can reutilize the bags for the next, next category. But by using the bags and determining the volume of space we need for the element that we're storing, no matter how we want to do it, then we can determine the bin that we want to store it in. Hopefully that makes sense. So that's our secret weapon. We can use the bags to determine the volume. The volume dictates the storage location that we're going into. So that's the secret weapon. If you gain nothing else from this video, the baggies are our secret weapon. Take it. It's a good one. So to start somewhere, we have the sorter Lego, right? But we have to determine how we're going to sort it. We're going to sort it by a Bricklin category or Lego category. We're going to sort it by color. We're going to sort it by set. Well, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Myself use a mixed method. So by all means, you can't, you don't have to all be in one category or the other. But we'll talk about categories first. So whether you use Lego categories or Bricklin categories, or categories that you decide that your collection should be sorted into. There's a lot of benefit to that. <clears throat> you end up with grouped items located together. So whether that be bricks, all the bricks end up in the same region or area. You end up with all these are bricks, all these are minifigures, all these are accessories to minifigures, then you have plates, and it goes on and on. There's different categories, right? But when you sort it by category, you end up with light categories near each other. So if you're building something, you know exactly, I go here for my bricks, I go over here for this, this bin has these things in it, etc., etc., etc. The other benefit to the storing or to sorting in that fashion or storing in that fashion is that when you find one category becomes overwhelming, you can break it down even further. So if you have it all two by four bricks and you find that for some reason you have a lot more two by four bricks in tan or sand yellow or however you want to call that color, you can break those apart and put them in their own bin at some point. So that way you have two by fours in light pink or uh, aqua marine. I don't think they have aqua marine. I don't know if that's the color. The negatives are that you can end up in that situation where you have an overwhelming number of one element over another element because of color. The other negative is in large collections, the categories can be quite diverse. And that means if you have one Acro mills bin for bricks and one for plates and one for everything else You're gonna find that the one for everything else is gonna get full rather quickly And you're gonna have to move on to something else But let's talk about sorting by color because a lot of people do by sort by color, right? And there's a lot of benefits to that too because if you're building something and you're looking for Pieces in one particular color or over another they're all going to be in the same area. So if you're looking for reds or blues or yellows or greens or blacks, they're all going to be in the very same area because you're sorting it by color. The downside is that sometimes when you have certain colors, they can be overwhelming in a vast amount, particularly black. When you get a lot of black elements together, it becomes a sea of black and it's hard to find anything. And then I find as well that eventually if you sort by color, you're going to end up having to sort by something else because those colors are becoming overwhelmed or overwhelming to you. Light gray, black, and then white is okay because you can still find the elements rather easily in a vast sea of white, but the darker colors definitely become a myriad of hard to find items. And that brings us to our last point, you can store by set. Now some people don't build mocks, and by mock I mean my own creation. Some people don't build beyond what Lego instructions are, and that's perfectly fine. That's how Lego wants 
to provide the sets to you to build, enjoy, and then do whatever you want with them. I personally like to collect as many parts as I can to make something else, but as you've seen in anything I've built, I have not really done that at all. So even somebody that considers themselves a mock builder, 90% of what I have is an official set sitting on the shelf. All of these, the whole town, even the Hogwarts build are all official sets put together. So if you have a number of ones on display and you need to, eventually you need to store them. And by instead of breaking them apart into a million pieces and putting them in a big bin, you can break them down and store them in, like we talked about before, the gallon Ziploc bag. Or use one of the bins. I have a number of bins that store simply one set over another. So you have this set on display, you're done with it, break it apart, put it in a Ziploc bag, store it in a bin, or you can put it in a bin of its own if there's enough elements, or, and you can store it by a set. Then when you're ready to build the set again, you open the, take the Ziploc bag out, you pour it out wherever you're gonna build, get the instructions out, you can put those in with it as well. Or you could go online and you could use the online instructions, and then you build your set and move on with your life. So there's definitely easy ways to store sets. However, there can be a lot of negative to that too. If you become a mock builder and you want to build something, it's going to be really hard to locate those elements that are in with those sets because they're stored how they're stored, right? So if I need eight more one by four light gray bricks, I have to go find them in bags of the set. That is going to take away from those sets and they're not gonna be complete anymore. So I end up having to find and buy more elements on my own and then store those otherwise. This is why I was talking about everything's kind of a mixture. All right, so we've talked about how we're gonna store. We're gonna store by a category or color or by the official Lego sets themselves. Somehow we have to sort that as well. Now it's easy to sort by set, right? When you take the set apart, you put it all in one bag, set it off to the side and that's sorted, right? but there are other methods to sort as well. You could actually use the bins from your acro mills to store, sort your collection into. You know exactly how many pieces are gonna fit in a bin if you are filling that bin. Or you could utilize red solo cups or deli cups, or in my case, I have a lot of Talenti ice cream or gelato containers. Those are really good for sorting. One, they're clear. Two, they're free. And three, well, they don't go in a landfill if I'm using them to sort Lego. We could also use our bins to sort Lego into. I use a number of six quart, 15 quart bins. They could have those set outside and we could sort into those. That's another way of doing it. And I use that all the time. So whether you use like the Acro Mills bins or the Talenti ice cream or Red Solo cups, the benefit of using those containers to sort your collection is that A, you can have a lot of them out and B, they're easy to pour from those into, say, a Ziploc bag or the reclosable U-line bags. Or in the case of the Acro Mills, they could be the final destination that those Lego elements are going to be stored in. And you could just put that container away after you've sorted into it. The downside is the human brain really has a finite amount of memory at one given time. And that's why phone numbers are seven digits because we can remember seven items really easy without writing it down. So anytime I find that I have more than seven containers I'm sorting into, you know, I kind of get lost and I have to check. With red solo cups, that means you have to look into the cup. Sometimes it's hard to see. Build Talenti ice cream, you can see through those. Or if you use seven little totes, like the six quart containers from Sterilite, you can see into those either. And then the last thing we're talking about is being able to locate our bricks. Now, you've seen videos of my collection and we've done a couple of shots already today and there's a lot to go with. How do I remember where certain elements are? Well, in some cases, I do have to search a little bit longer, which is why I take longer to build than some of the people because my category is still not in the state that it should be. But if we bring back the Acro Mills bins, 
and we use these as an example, if we're going to be sorting and storing into these items, and say we have a rack just like this, and we already established that using the reclosable bags helps us determine volume so we can decide where they want to go. So we just got to really figure out if like this is going to be plates, this is going to be bricks, this is going to be blues, this is going to be reds. And that's really up to you as the, as the uh, user because it's really easy to see this up on the wall and know that it's all reds or all blues or both. You could have reds and blues in this one. And a lot of people do that. I don't. I go by... I just put them in there. And the reason why I do it the way I do it, well, let's finish talking about it. Or you could have these all bricks and you could just go one by ones, one by twos, one by threes, one by fours, one by fives, right? They don't have one by fives, but. But if you go in that method where either it's all color or all by a certain part, I find that you'll end up with certain bins that you'll have to skip over because I may be able to put all my one by one whites in this, but I know all my one by two whites will fit in this one, or they may all have to go in this one. So you could end up with a discombobulated collection that doesn't follow a linear path, right? So if we're talking about these are all reds, well, I may not have enough red elements to put in these two and then they end up empty. Or if these are all one by ones and they find that one by one yellows need to go down here, well, these aren't all one by one bricks then because I have one by ones up here and I have one down here. So I find that by using the bags, I can determine volume and then I can just put the elements wherever they need to be in the collection to fit. So if I need to have these one by one plates, and these need to be one by one bricks, these need to be minifigure heads, so be it method that I use to determine where I find them in my collection is a uh, addressable system. So for example, this cabinet is A, the other cabinet is B, this is row one, this is column one, this is row two, three, four, five, column one, two, three, these are obviously being one, two, three, four, right? So if I have cabinet A, one, one, and then you can even sub, you can break it down again, like in the back, you could have ones and twos, right? And that's how mine is. So for example, this bin without a divider in it, in my collection would be A, three, four, right? So I know that on my database, cause I keep a database of all my Lego, that element, and it doesn't matter what it is, a, three, four is going to be this bin right there, right? So third one now. So instead of randomly walking around and looking for my parts that I need, I make a part pull list. I go through the database. I write down where all those addresses are. And then I go pull parts for the mock that I'm building. So that's the method that I've used to locate my bricks. But a lot of people use the Acro Mills just like I have on my wall. And they sort it however they want. Sometimes you have to look for it. It's no big deal. But once your collection gets to a certain point, and mine is at that point, I think that I sort by piece and by color for the most part. And then I use an addressable system as found in a database. And you can write a program to find those for you. You can just drop your part list in and boom, done. You can export out of your CAD programs a pull list and you can do it that way too. Tons of ways to do it. We're not going to get into that. But we want to talk about storing, sorting, and locating our Lego, and that's what we've done today. Remember, the key takeaways are that you don't have to stick to one different method of doing it over another. You could sort by, by uh, element and by color and by set, however you decide to do it. And then, of course, by locating, keeping a database or doing it in some sort of logical order that you can remember that the, the where the parts are that you're looking for. These are going to be these are going to be reds and blues. These are going to be reds. So be it. But in conclusion, we've talked about the effective means of storing, sorting and uh, locating our Lego for the benefit of our of expediting our builds, right? Making our builds go faster whether that is just building a set or whether it's building a mock in general. It also helps and I've complained about it in the past. If you don't know where your parts are, it's really hard to know that you have them. 
So when you're building something for them or with them, you don't buy them again. And I do that all the time. I buy them again because I can't find them. And that's the reason why I've been so diligent. And I haven't really been diligent. But so adamant about an effective means of storing Lego, which is what I've been working on, which I'm sharing with you today. But that's all we have today. I just want to talk about a topic that's pretty important to me. It's an ongoing issue. And it's an always it's always ongoing it's never ending you're never going to be fully sorted you always have to maintain what you've already sorted into at some point well thanks for spending time with us today hopefully you pulled something out of this video if not comment down below something i missed something that you found effective in your collection or in general just give us a shout out and while you're down there feel free to like and subscribe to the video uh, the video we appreciate it, it helps the channel and as always, happy building. Take care, everyone.